We're super excited to partner with Home Street. Home Street offers so many great benefits to University of Washington employees. If whether you're looking to refinance, purchase a home, um, work with affiliate realtors, uh, you name it, they are a great resource and starting place if you're kind of going down that endeavor with your home or future home. Um, today, we're going to be talking about refinancing and using home equity, and we have Jessica Santana with us, who is a senior loan officer and works exclusively with UW employees um, who come to Home Street to, to get help. Um, so we're very, very happy to have Jessica back with us today. Um, before we get started, I'm going to go ahead and launch a few polls. We'd just like to kind of get a pulse of who's with us today. So I'm going to go ahead and get that first one started. This is asking if you are planning on refinancing your home, what, what's your interest in refinancing? Are you for sure going to and you want to learn more before you do, maybe in the next year, not sure, or, or you're just kind of wanting to learn more? Right, are almost at 100%. I'll give it just a few more seconds here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys those results. So as you can see, majority of people are kind of all over the place. We're about almost at a even split there. Um, some people are within the next six to 12 months, others not sure, others just here to learn more info. So we've got a good, good mix for you, Jessica. The next poll question okay. is property and residence. So what type of property are you considering refinancing if you were considering to refinance? Maybe a single family residence, a condo, manufactured home, investment property, or second home. These are all anonymous, by the way, if, if anyone's wondering about that. <laughs> Good. Right, give it a few more seconds here. Okay, looks like the majority are considering refinancing for a single family residence, a few or one okay. answer for a condo today. All right, and just as a reminder, go ahead and send questions in the chat throughout. We will get to questions at the end though, so you might wanna wait in case Jessica covers something you have a question about. I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off. Thanks so much, Jessica, for being here. You got it, my pleasure. My pleasure, let's close the poll. All right. Well, thank you for joining. Um, my name is Jessica Santana, and I'm a loan officer at Home Street Bank. I have been now with Home Street for about 10 years and have been financing homes for 25 years. So now my clients send their kids over to buy their home, which is really, really wonderful. Anyway, thank you for um, attending the class. Today, we're going to talk about refinancing. And let me just make sure I can go. Mm -hmm. There we go. Next screen. All right, so we're gonna talk about the reasons to refinance, why do it, why not do it, um, other considerations. We're gonna give you a form that you can complete in case you're looking for some interest rates so that you can provide me with the information that I need to be able to give you a quote. And then we're gonna talk about the benefits that you are eligible for when you purchase a home or you refinance, which are offered to you as a UW employee by Home Street Bank. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, there, all right. <laughs> the, the reasons to refinance primarily uh, for most people is to just get a lower interest rate, right? Interest rates have dipped into the historical lows through the pandemic. And during the pandemic peak, um, they really dropped into the low twos, 2.7, 2.8% range. They have been increasing now that there are vaccinations and restaurants are full, right? With the economy, they'll continue to go up. Prior to the pandemic, we were in the high fours. And so I think that um, the tendency is going to be for interest rates to move back up to at least where they were. Um, and that's, we're noticing that in the market already um, happening very quickly. And so the main reason why people want to refinance for the most part is to lower the interest rate that they have. Um, as a rule of thumb, many times we say, hey, um, save at least 1% on the interest rate to make sure that it's worth it. 
um, but it's important for you to just um, have a consultation with a loan officer or um, an expert who can help you determine if it makes sense or not. Um, some people want to go from an ARM adjustable rate mortgage into a fixed rate, and maybe that's why they are um, refinancing. I've had several people call last week. They had adjustable rate mortgages that are going to be going adjusted, and the rate's going to go up. So they need to get out of that product and get a fixed rate. Other people have had their home for 10 years now um, and are trying to um, lower the interest rate and also um, shorten the term of the loan. So perhaps a 15-year term or a 20-year term. So it's going to be a shorter period. It might still allow you to keep the same monthly payment, but then you'll be able to just finish paying the loan off faster. Um, usually going to a 15-year term or a 20-year term offers you a lower interest rate than a 30-year term. For some people, combining a first mortgage and a home equity line of credit might be the main reason to refinance, and we're going to talk about that in an upcoming slide. Um, some people also try to refinance to consolidate debt. Maybe the interest rate on your credit cards is high, and by using your home equity um, and refinancing, getting some cash out, you may be able to save yourself a lot of money. Um, some people also want to do this to, for home improvements. We're seeing a lot of that lately, right? Through the pandemic, a lot of people are working from home and they stare at the same walls all day long. And so they want to update their home, uh, maybe renovate, um, and we're seeing a lot of home improvement loans. Um, for some people, it's college tuition for the kids or whatever the other reasons might be. So you have equity in your home, you may be able to leverage um, that amount of equity to pay some things off. Um, for some people, removing mortgage insurance is the reason why they are refinancing. Um, sometimes you can remove the mortgage insurance without refinancing if you have enough equity. Um, it depends on the loan type that you have. If you're not sure, um, if the reason why you're looking at refinancing is just to remove the mortgage insurance, just talk to your loan officer to find out if that makes sense for you. You may be able to just have them review your account, document that you have enough equity, and they may be able to just remove mortgage insurance um, without having to refinance. All right. So let's talk a little bit about um, consolidating your first mortgage and your second mortgage. Um, I don't know if many of you are familiar with a home equity line of credit, but for some reason, for some people, keeping their mortgage the way it is, keep your first mortgage as it is untouched, and maybe you're looking to um, do a home remodel and you want to take some equity out, you may be able to just get a home equity line of credit. So that would be a second mortgage. The second mortgage is going to work like a credit card. Let's say that you get a loan for $100,000, but then you only use 10,000 of the 100. Well, the monthly payment is based only on what you use, only on that 10,000 that you use, for example. On home equity lines of credit, at least the product that we offer at Home Street, it's going to be a variable interest rate. So HELOCs, are based on prime the index plus a margin. So they add a specific amount depending on how much equity you have on your credit score, whether it's your primary residence or not, right? All of that is going to impact the total interest rate. And you're going to be able to have um, mi minimum payments due will just be interest only. So it's a very simple calculation. You take your loan amount used, times the interest rate, divide by 12, and that's the minimum payment due. And then you can send 500 extra per, to principal or 1,000 or however much you want to bring that balance down quickly. People like it once again, because instead of borrowing, in this case, $100,000 and making a payment on the full amount every month, you pay only on the amount you use. So that's why home equity lines of credit are very popular. It's more like a credit card, right? You pay on the balance you use. This advantage is the interest rate is variable. So as prime, the index the Fed uses, 
the stimulator slowed down the economy. It's published in the Wall Street Journal. If that goes up, then that means your interest rate is also going to go up. So it's meant to be a short-term type of loan, right? And that you pay off quickly, then you can use that balance again for another project at another time. You get to keep that open for 10 years, pay it down, borrow again. After 10 years, the balance due that remains will become a fixed rate 15 year term loan, okay? And then you will no longer be able to um, use it and reuse it. What I normally say to people who get to that point is let's just get you another HELOC, right? For many people, it's a good project fund to have. Um, if it's your primary residence, there are no closing costs involved, which is why it's very popular. Um, but if you're looking for a longer term type of loan, you may want to just do a cash out transaction, just have one mortgage, take equity out and make sure it's a fixed rate loan. All right. So those are the two options that you normally see. Um, either refinance your main mortgage or do a home equity line of credit where, like I said, you can use it and reuse it. Home Street does not offer a fixed rate HELOC. We offer only the HELOC that has more, more of the credit card feature where you don't pay on the full amount of the credit limit. You only pay on what you use. Okay, so if you're thinking of a fixed rate second mortgage, those rates tend to be higher than the interest rates for a first mortgage. And so you'll notice that if you compare fixed rate on a second mortgage versus a HELOC on the fixed rate, you're going to have a higher interest rate. All right, it is an option to consider. We don't offer that feature. We only offer the HELOC. It's more popular because people want flexibility with monthly payments. They want to be able to pay only on what they use, All right? So many people have a HELOC already and they have a first mortgage and they are worried about rates going up on the HELOC. So maybe you'll consolidate the two, get just one mortgage, one monthly payment, and hopefully a lower interest rate that can save you a lot of money. All right, um, some reasons not to refinance. Well, um, in some cases, if your loan amount is already very small, um, the closing costs in relation to your loan amount may just seem to be big, right? Even an appraisal right now is about $700. So if you owe $70,000 on your mortgage, the appraisal might just be too big, right? Just the fee itself will be too big in relation to your loan amount. You want to find out, okay, how long is it going to take me to recover the costs I'm paying to save into the future? And it might take you just too long to recover that cost so that then it's real savings. So you want to take a peek and see, hey, does this make sense or not? If you're not sure, talk to your loan officer. Give us a call. We can help you determine whether it's worth your while or not. The um, other main question that we ask is, hey, how long do you plan to stay in the home? Because if it's gonna take you four years to recover the cost of refinancing, and you plan to be there maybe just five years, and then you're thinking about moving, then you might not wanna refinance then because you're not even gonna be there to reap the benefit of refinancing, right? So you wanna make sure um, your plan of for the future is to stay in the home long, long term. Okay, if you're thinking about moving, then don't refinance at all. And then for some people, they may wanna go with a longer term. If right now, maybe the monthly payments feels tight, they might want to go into a 30 year term to make the monthly payment as small as possible. For other people, it may be shortening the term. Maybe um, they have had a home for many years now and they're ready to take that next leap. Uh, perhaps um, going from, you have 20 years left, maybe look at, hey, what would the monthly payment look like if I jumped into a 15 year term? We also offer a 10 year term, right? So just um, review your options. There's something out there for everyone, right? Um, we're all at different stages in our life out there. So, um, just give us a jingle, let us know what your goals are, or what your concerns are, and we can help you out. Um, when you look at the cost of refinancing, as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the cost of refinancing might just 
not be too big. It might be too high compared to the benefit that you receive compared to the savings. It might take you just too long to recover the cost, or it might be super fast. And so if you break even really fast, then it's a no brainer, right? That's what I call it. You, it, it totally makes sense. Then for sure, move forward with a refinance. The closing costs are normally rolled into your loan, right? You finance them. You don't write a check. And so we want to make sure you're mindful, though, that it's using up some of that equity that you have built um, to add these closing costs in. Sometimes you hear people uh, talk about no cost refinances. And the way that normally works is, let's say that today we have an interest rate. This is just an example. Let's say today the interest rate is 3.875% fixed for 30 years, right? And that um, interest rate means it's that you're not paying any extra fees to buy the rate down, but then you're going to have appraisal, title, escrow, all of those costs that you had when you purchased the home, you're going to have them again when you refinance. And so option number two would be, well, what if the lender pays for those costs for you? And the only way we can do that for you is by increasing the interest rate. Let's say we go to 4.5% interest rate instead. That increase generates a yield or a credit that we turn around and give you to cover the closing costs for you. So the no cost um, refinance option happens not because we're giving you free <laughs> a loan that has no cost at all. It's because we're increasing the interest rate to cover the closing costs for you so that you don't have to roll them into your loan. So we can take a look at both options, right? Should you um, have it rolled in for about every $10,000 that you add to your loan as a rule of thumb, it means about $50 per month added to the monthly payment. So you may want to just roll them in. You might want to just pay them at closing. Some people like to just write a check at closing. That way they're not adding that to their principal balance. It just depends on what makes more sense for you. And so we want to look at the savings versus the cost, right? How long will it take for you to recover that cost? How long does it take for you to break even? If it's a no-brainer because you break even within the first 12 months, absolutely go for it. Do that. Um, and if not, then, you know, you may want to consider just not refinancing. Maybe you can just send extra towards principal on your own. And that by itself will help you lower that balance faster and save you a lot of money in interest, right? And that's free. Um, some common misconceptions for some people. Um, it's playing the rate game, right? Some people have had their home now for 20 years, and every time rates drop, they continue to go and refinance and they keep adding costs, right? They roll in these costs to refinance. And then they play this rate game because you can, here are the interest rates, right? For example, 3.875 or 3.75, 3.625. So as you get lower, you're paying more points or so-called fees to buy the rate down. And so if you end up spending $12,000 just to buy the rate down and you roll it into the loan, you're not even writing a check, it might save you money monthly because the interest rate is smaller, but it might take you five years to recover that cost. You might be better off just using those $12,000 to give your kitchen a facelift, right? So we've got to take a look to see, hey, what really makes sense here? Um, and again, I spoke about the no cost refinances, right? It does not mean that they're free. It just means that the interest rate is going to be increased so that that way there's enough yield um, to be able to cover the closing costs on your behalf. All right, so here's a little refinance um, information form that you can complete if you would like to have us um, give you a quote. I normally, I, I always tell my clients, hey, do your comparing on the same day because interest rates change every day and sometimes even twice daily. So if you get um, an estimate from, let's say, me today, and then you get an estimate from another lender uh, Friday and you're comparing, you're going to be looking at apples and oranges, right? So do it on the same day. Um, to give someone a quote, 
I personally like to schedule a 30 minute phone consultation and I'm able to um, help you understand the process of the refinance, understand the cost. I'll ask you questions about your credit score, the loan balance of your loan, if you have a second mortgage, um, what the estimated value of your home is, we'll jump into Zillow or one of those engines to get a clear idea. Um, and then I normally like to ask my clients to email me a copy of their mortgage statement. That way I can take out of there all the information that I need um, so that I can provide you an accurate little cost estimate that you'll receive via email so you can see um, what the monthly payment and the closing costs are going to look like. Um, so you can use this form that we have here, right? Your, your email, your name, um, the, oops, the, the balance, um, current balance of your first mortgage. If you have a second mortgage, you can include that. Usually tax and insurance come lumped together into the, the so-called escrow balance of your mortgage payment. And I end up having to look up the property tax to separate the tax from the home insurance in this escrow account. So if you have the annual taxes and the home insurance figures um, handy, it can really help us. Um, if not, just have the mortgage statement available and I will pull the information that I need from it to provide you with an accurate um, estimate. This is a two page um, little form. Um, you're going to tell us what you would like, a 30-year fixed rate, if you want 20, are you looking to get some cash back, how much, what's the purpose of the loan, is this your primary residence or an investment property. Um, so to me personally, the easiest thing to do is to have you just email, let's schedule a 30-minute phone consultation, and then um, go ahead and email me a copy of your mortgage statement. One little... Um, important factor here that's not included in the form is what is your credit score? And so we definitely want to make sure that you let us know that because that plays a big role in the interest rate. Okay, so you can just complete this, send it to us at this email or give us a call at the phone number listed there. Um, and we'll be happy to either help you with a quote right then um, ask you some questions, or you can just complete the form and email it to us so that we have it available. And then we'll just email you a quote. Um, and then um, the other great thing that I wanted to share with you is um, in regards to the benefits that you receive because you work for the University of Washington. So we offer you some cost savings, and that is whether you are refinancing your primary residence or a vacation home, um, or whether you're purchasing a home, um, that will be your primary residence um, or a vacation home, as I said as well. We do not offer these benefits if it's an investment property. So if this is a property that you rent out to others for a profit, then these benefits would not apply. But it does mean uh, if you're purchasing a home for your primary residence or if you're refinancing, then you get a credit towards closing costs. If you're buying a home, you also get, sorry, you get a lender credit, which is equal to a half of 1% of the loan amount applied towards your closing costs. So if your loan amount is 500,000, half of 1% is $2,500 that will be applied towards the closing costs. That's whether you're purchasing or refinancing. If you're purchasing, if you have um, a real estate agent relationship already, that's fine. You can go ahead and work with those agents, no problem. But if you would like to work with one of the real estate agents from our team, they are super generous and contribute some of their commission towards your closing costs. So it also helps you to minimize the cost of purchasing a home. And so you get a credit from the realtor as well as from the lender when you are purchasing a home. If you're refinancing, it's just the lender credit that applies. And in both cases, it's half of 1% of the loan amount. All right, we offer down payment assistance as well. So if you're interested in purchasing a home in the future and thinking about down payment assistance, we can definitely help you with that. It's a 
very popular product that we offer. Um, we offer classes just like this one that we're offering for you now. Um, we do teach classes that have to do with purchasing a home, um, refinancing, updating the home, maintaining the home, and so on. Um, the other great um, feature of the benefits is that they can be shared with your immediate family. So maybe you're not buying a home right now, but your mom and dad or maybe your kids are purchasing a home and they could absolutely benefit from these um, benefits that you receive. Um, and then exclusive access. Yes, please. If you just walk into a Home Street Bank branch, um, the staff that's there is likely not going to be familiar with these benefits. And so we ask you to please give us a call at the phone number listed, and I'll show you. Um, or so you can go to the website, right, that's listed here, and you'll see the loan officers in my team, including myself. And you can either just reach out to me or reach out to any one of us within this website, you'll be able to see who we are. That way we can provide you with all the benefits you're eligible for. Um, or you can just um, give us a call and you can reach, um, oops, I am, sorry, this is Ryan Cooney is the loan officer who was going to teach this class today and he is um, unavailable. He's making, having his first baby. Um, today. So um, that's the reason I am here to um, help you and share with you this information. So you see his contact information there, um, but you also see mine here. Um, so you can reach out to any one of us. You can go in there, see our contact information, reach out to us. Um, just please reach out to us at Home Street Bank so that we can, uh, at the affinity department so that we can um, help you to redeem these benefits because we are absolutely familiar with them. All right, so I hope you found this helpful. If you have questions, again, reach out to us. I'd be super happy to assist. Do you have any, any questions from them in particular, Anna? Yeah, so right now we haven't had any come in the chat. I'm gonna go ahead. Give it a few minutes here. Oh, I just got one. And then I'm also gonna let everyone know you can raise your hand if you'd like to, I'll keep an eye on both sides. So one that just came directly to me is, um, is it correct in understanding that if someone were to do a cash out refinance and use it for something other than home improvements, you may no longer be able to deduct the mortgage interest on taxes each year? Mm -hmm. No, it can be a cash out refinance. And even if it's not for home improvement, my understanding is that you can still deduct the interest. There might be other, um, other reasons why you cannot deduct the whole thing. It might depend on um, just your personal um, deductions and how much taxes are taken out of your paycheck. It might have something to do with your income. It might have something to do with the loan amount that you have. So talk to your accountant. That really is an accountant's question. My understanding is that you can still deduct the interest from your mortgage, whether you're using that cash to remodel your home or whether you're using it to purchase a car. Um, you know, you should be able to still deduct that. But please, please talk to an accountant because that's their field of expertise, right? I know a bit but um, they lost change all the time. So just chat with your accountant to be safe. All right, thank you. Another question I got is how important is your debt to income ratio on a HELOC? Well, we look at 45% debt to income ratio maximum, right? And if the loan amount is greater than 500,000, they're going to also want to see that you have reserves. So the total mortgage payment times six months, documented in a savings, checking, 401k account, or so on. So as the loan gets bigger, they also want to see that. They're not, they're concerned about the ratio and reserves. But if it's less than 500000 we don't ask for any reserves. So because it's a HELOC, it's still, it's, it's just like purchasing a home again. We're going to look at 
credit, income, job tenure, um, everything. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. So I have not gotten any other questions. I'm wondering, do you, do you wanna real quick check your chat just in case anyone sent you a private message? I'm not seeing any other hands. So I'll give it a, just a few minutes here, but otherwise I guess we, we can give everybody back maybe another 20 to 30 minutes on your afternoon and time to think about all this good information. Yeah, yeah, I think everyone's situation is completely different, right? The, the credit score and how much equity you have will be super important. But then it's also the type of property. So an investment property will cost a little bit more to refinance than a primary residence, right? If you're just not sure, you're thinking, hey, just my rate is anything higher than 4.5% interest rate, I would say, have somebody take a look at it to see if we can help you to refinance it. Or if you have an FHA loan, right? Those have permanent mortgage insurance included in the monthly payment. Perhaps getting you into a conventional loan with no MI is a good idea. There's lots of different reasons why you may benefit from refinancing. And if you're just not sure, you think, hmm, I'm not sure if this would benefit or not. It's all right, just ask. Right? It doesn't hurt to have somebody tell you, nah, I think your rate is super good, just keep it. And if that's the case, then that's what I will tell you for sure. All right. Well, thank you, Jessica. Thanks for filling in also. Yeah. I think it's exciting for Ryan and his family. So, but we're always happy to have you with us as well. Yeah. Right. Very exciting. Well, those are all the questions all we right. thought. I, someone did message me and say they'd be reaching out soon. So, um, I hope everyone who's still on with us has a great rest of your day. And like I said, we'll, we'll get this recording up on our YouTube. So if you want to revisit and then one other quick plug is next month, uh, home street, will be back as well. We'll be talking about, um, buying a home and really kind of looking at if you're considering buying a home in the next year, or maybe even kind of gearing up for home buying season, peak home buying season, we'll be covering some of those topics and what you should know in March. All right. That is all I have on this Monday. Excellent. Happy Valentine's Yay. Day. And I hope everyone has a great afternoon. Happy Valentine's. Thanks for having me. Bye. Bye.